So let's finish the series talking about comparison. So we started with this paper by Trevor Hasty, and here there, there were some ideas like the running mean and the lowest. There are also different cubic splines and Gaussian kernel. So let's just try to do things in, in R. So you can do things in a couple of ways with a GAMP library created by Trevor Hasty himself. And actually the syntax is very simple. So you only have to include this S function and this S function is then corrected by some attributes and, and here with this attribute you can say if you're going to do a loss regression, a natural spline, a smooth spline or whatever. In Carrot the syntax is more or less the same so the only thing that you have to do is include the method but basically you have the same formula so you have this S function that is somehow summarizing everything that you can do that we have seen in these videos. So let's just start with linear regression. Imagine that we are trying to to compute the wage versus the, 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 the education, the age and the year. And you can see that you have this clearly non-linear relationship. So whenever you do a linear regression, things are not going to work. So despite the fact that the correlation can be larger or lower, it doesn't matter. The thing is that you have some non-linearity and, and you can see this with automatically with this lowest curve. Let's try polynomial regression. I'm going to use a square polynomial in age. And you can see that now R is a little better and R squared is adjusted R squared is even better. So we have an improvement over that. And again, we can see that the addition of this new coefficient, the h square, is significant. So th this is not just a matter of getting a, a lower error or a higher r square. It has to do with the relevance of this coefficient. And you can see now that the residuals are almost flat. Again, this lowest curve is automatically drawn with this first panels function in the psych library. And now we can be really happy with this sort of fit. What about splines? I wouldn't say that splines are necessary for this data set, but let's play a little bit. So let's use caret. We're going to train again this function. I'm going to use this gam spline, and I'm going to use different, different number of nodes. Remember that degrees of freedom here is the number of nodes from two to 25 step by two. And again, cross validation tells me that the, the optimal choice is six. What happens with just two nodes? This is really good, actually. You can see that with just a couple of nodes, we are capturing pretty well the shape of the curve. And if we have too many nodes, we can see these things are more trying to feed the idiosyncrasies of, of the data. And sometimes we are somewhere in the middle. Sometimes this is misleading because if you take a look at the vertical axis, so here we are ranging from minus 40 to 10, and here the range is 50 to 250. And this is because we are scaling the data, but also because we are not plotting the data properly. So if you want to compare, a, a good recommendation is use the original data and then they use this fit on top of the data. And you can see here that it's the, the, the five degrees of freedom spline is performing pretty well, despite the fact that it's something weird in our data. What about the lowest curve? We have this automatically, but, but you can do this manually. So that you have this function lowest in the standard R library. So again, if you do this fit using the lowest function, now you can see that the, the prediction is pretty smooth. And again, you have a good flavor of the data. So you have an increase, uh, a kind of plateau in the middle of the curve, and then this slowing down. So you can do this sort of exp exploratory uh, analysis. So sometimes the splines or lowest curves or polynomial regression are not meant to do extrapolations or to find out what are the hidden relationship between the variables. So sometimes you just want to have a grasp of the data, of the nonlinearity of the data. And the good thing of ggplot is that you have this function this uh, this addition to the function which is called GM smooth and actually you can say what type of smooth so you can use linear regression or linear regression with polynomial of degree two or linear regression with polynomial of degree three and automatically ggplot plots you the data and also add this function and a kind of uh, confidence interval about this function so you can see that the quadratic polynomial is, is uh, still not good enough but the cubic polynomial is and again the magic of ggplot is that you have in in in, GG, in GM smooth you have included loss functions, uh, generalized additive models, and you can play with natural splines of different number of nodes, or B splines with different number of nodes, and you can see the the outcome here. So now the winner would be something like a cubic spline, and actually you could the cubic regression sorry, and the polynomial uh, with two degrees are almost the same. So you can see that these curves are almost the same. So again, if you're interested just in taking a flavor of the nonlinearity of the data, you don't need to do very fancy cross-validation stuff. So play a little bit with the ggplot. 
Okay, to, to finish this video, so let me summarize the, the pros and cons of GAMS. So the good thing with GAMS is the, the model is additive, so you can still have this idea of sensitivity of the parameters. And automatically with this with this S function, you can model nonlinear functions. So you are including flexibility and smoothness using degrees of freedom. The limitation is that because of this additivity, interactions can be missed in some ex in some cases and still this is bad for extrapolation and bad for interpretation so the only thing that you can do with GAMS is trying to see if the data is not linear but know why or how can you improve the model again if you ask the question which is sometimes misleading which model is better i would say that if you're interested in smoothing things in, in any of the models is better if you want to make predictions, probably a smoothing spline is good because you're combining flexibility with a smoothness. And I, this is a one example of work I did in the past, trying to correlate temperature with influenza, with cases in, in an epidemic of influenza. And in this case, where we were interested not just in the function, but also derivatives of the function. So if you want to take derivatives, integration, combine the data, or do some ad advanced stuff, a smoothing splines are a bit, a bit a good option. But if you're interested in just have a visual feel of how the linear or non-linearity of the data is, Lois is good enough. And sometimes if you have a lot of data, you don't need to do a smoothing spline. That, that means that you have to choose the penalty and you have a lot of degrees of freedom, a lot of choices there. And sometimes simpler natural splines are good enough. So we've covered a lot of material in these videos. So I suggest you go back and download the scripts that you have in the description and play a little bit with the data and the code and make up your mind with these ideas.